Hey guys, my name is Arthur and today I would like to show you how you can do a very simple smart contract that lets you to deposit an NFT inside this smart contract. So basically that would be a really simple technique to do a staking of the NFT. Some people may ask question uh, why we would need to stake NFT in the smart contract. However, I think right now there are a lot of projects that are encouraging you to stake your NFTs and get some uh, rewards in return. So for instance, you can just put NFT into your smart contract. And this means that you cannot trade that NFT on the open sea, you cannot sell it to anybody, you cannot speculate on the price, the NFT is just um, staked, deposited in the smart contract. And after a certain period of time, you can get the NFT out of the smart contract and receive some rewards for that. So of course, today, I will not show you the whole project how you can uh, you know do everything and do every scenario of um, staking nft however i will just show you the simple technique how you can deposit the nft inside the smart contract and i will explain you a few few things uh, around that um, because um, i think a lot of people are asking this question uh, on my discord channel and on some comments uh, to the videos on this uh, channel so i will try just to explain it um, to you so here we have a um, smart contract. I call it uh, NFT staker. Uh, here I have some uh, regular information about the license and the version of the solidity that I would like to use. Uh, in the second tab here in the Remix IDE, I have the um, NFT smart contract, which is your ERC-1155. The whole thing that I will show you today would work also for some other standards for NFTs. So for regular ERC-721, it should work as well. Um, and uh, this is the regular contract. I will uh, deploy it to the memory um, in the second and then we will use it with the NFT staker. So this contract would be responsible for actually taking the NFT from the person that would like to stake NFTs. So uh, first of all, uh, we're going to need some imports. The first import is the interface of the ERC-1155. And whenever you build the smart contract that interacts with other smart contract, you might want to import the interface of this smart contract. So your code knows how to talk to other smart contracts because you have to know that whenever we do the staking logic this is the separate smart contract and the contract for mm, the coin or the token that we would like to stake is completely separate smart contracts so we have you will learn today about how you can call other smart contracts from other code so we have the interface for for ERC 1155 I'm just importing it from the open Zeppelin contracts this is um, well-known repository that contains battle-tested um, security audited smart contracts so whenever you would like to use some nft or erc20 i would highly uh, encourage you to just check open zeppelin um, page they have really nice docs they are explaining each function of the erc1155 and some other popular standards um, and the second thing that i also imported here is the erc1155 receiver um, smart contract um, because because whenever we are transferring um, the NFT to some address, then uh, the standard uh, tries to check whether the um, smart contract that receives NFT understands how to receive the NFT. So just we don't have situation that many people do uh, that they are um, transferring the tokens or NFTs um, to the smart contract that knows shit about uh, NFTs. And then you have very, very uh, bad situation that you have some smart contract that actually receives the token, but then you cannot get the token back of, out of this smart contract. So you have to be really careful whenever you build the smart contract that can receive some tokens that later you can just receive back or, or uh, withdraw the funds from your uh, contract. So these two imports are needed. Uh, in the minute, you will see that, that we're going to use them. So first of all, I will um, just set here the parent NFT variable. Um, so this would be, um, as you can see, I'm using the uh, interface type. So um, here I will assign to this var public variable um, the address of the parent NFT. So uh, we have the contract called NFT staker and we have a concept of parent NFT um, contract that holds information about um, our 
all tokens that we minted. So I will use uh, the separate smart contract here. Uh, and um, here we can, we, we just have to provide the address of the smart contract. So we know to which contract we would like to um, communicate with. Of course, these two smart contracts have to be deployed to the same network. So there is no option to talk to, you know, smart contract on the mainnet from the Polygon or from the Polygon to the Rinkeby. It's not possible. We have to have these two smart contracts in the very same network. Um, and here we're going to assign this uh, address um, to, to this uh, variable. Uh, then I will prepare uh, some kind of map uh, structure. So we would have the array that represents address of the staker and some struct in which we will inf um, include information about which token was actually um, deposited to the smart contract and how much of these tokens are there. Of course, this is just a simple example. So I will hold information like token ID, amount and the timestamp. So we know exactly which token um, was deposited, how much of it and what was the time when we actually issued that um, transaction. Um, so this would be something like, uh, you know, a so, 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 so this would be just an array uh, where the, the each element represents uh, the address and then the address is mapped to the stake. You will, you will uh, basically see how, how this uh, works. Um, so um, usually when we are staking some NFT, um, we are staking it for some purpose, right? Uh, uh, it's hard to me to imagine situation that we are just depositing NFT to get nothing out of it. Usually we want to get some reward and reward can be calculated, uh, for instance, um, depending on how much, how long we actually stake this NFT. So if we stake it for seven days, uh, you can get the small reward. However, if you would stake it for seven years, <laughs> then probably you would like to get uh, more rewards. Uh, and today I will not cover the logic of, you know, uh, uh, staking um, and getting the rewards because the rewards can be different for each project and I don't want to have this you know two hour long video but I will just show you that we have the concept of storing information about how long we were staking um, that certain NFT and then I think you, you will get the idea that you can build around it some additional functionalities to this smart contract and then we have the function finally called stake uh, that will take two um, parameters. One is token ID and then the second one is amount. Um, and then first of all, uh, we're gonna store information about, okay, uh, that this uh, caller of this function, so message.sender, uh, wants to stake the certain token ID from this uh, from this contract. Uh, and then I'm using the struct. Struct is a special, um, special uh, structure inside the Solidity, so we can aggregate more information and for instance, uh, pass here token ID, amount, and block timestamp. Block.timestamp, it's a really um, nice thing that um, we can get the timestamp of in which time uh, the block was mined. So we'll store that information. Now it's a tricky part because we have to call the function from the parent NFT smart contract, which holds information about our um, NFTs. And here we are just using the variable parent uh, NFT and we can call all the functions that are publicly available by this smart contract. And we are doing the transfer from the caller to the address of this smart contract. So address um, parentheses this means uh, that this variable holds information about the smart contract address that we will just deployed. And we have to use it because obviously we don't know to which address our smart contract would be um, deployed. And here's one thing um, that you have to consider um, because um, a lot of people think uh, that the parent.nft safe transfer from is called as a caller because the caller calls stake and then there's just a call of the function and we are moving some tokens to the smart contract. However, at the caller, um, that is on the safe trans transfer from is actually our smart contract because we are calling the smart contract and this smart contract is calling another smart contract. So message.sender for the safe transfer from is actually our smart contract, not the caller. So if I would just um, save it, um, then you can see what's the problem. So um, Previously, I just deployed the NFT smart contract. So the smart contract is here. And if I would copy it, um, then I can just um, submit here uh, the address of this parent NFT smart contract. Um, so if um, I would deploy it now, 
we have the NFT staker contract. And now I will try to um, deposit the token ID two uh, with amount of 20. Um, and let's let's try to call this transaction. And here you can see that ERC uh, 1155 Errol, the caller is not owner nor approved. Uh, so I'm the caller and I own these tokens because uh, here in the constructor, I minted some tokens. So I own the token with the ID two and I have 100 copies of it. However, we have this error because actually the size transfer from is called by the smart contract, not the caller. And in order to have, um, avoid this error, uh, we have to approve um, the, the smart contract. So I will copy um, the address of the smart contract and I will just copy it here to set approval approval for all. Um, and then uh, if I call this, um, I'm basically approving the certain address to move the tokens in my name. And this is very important to not approve the smart contracts or addresses that you don't trust. Because this means uh, that this address becomes the operator of my NFTs. So if I approve the hacker or the shady smart contract that I don't know what is it doing, then there is a high risk that somebody can just move the tokens out of me and never give them back. However, here, the NFT staker smart contract can be verified on the blockchain and everybody can check the smart contract code that we are not doing any shady things because right now we are just having the stake function, then we would have um, the unstake or withdraw function. Uh, and then you can be sure that uh, the author of the code cannot do anything shady with your smart contract. So now I approved um, the, the address. And now I will try to again, um, call the stake function. Uh, however, this time we have different error um, because we are approved. Our smart contract can move the tokens, but now we are not the ERC1155 uh, receiver. And in order to fix that, um, we have to just um, add special function. And this special function works in the way uh, that it returns the hash of um, the function on received. Um, and then that's the way that smart contract can verify that actually the address that will get the tokens understand how to deal with the NFTs. And this is great because uh, a lot of people are building smart contracts and then they are sending some tokens to the smart contract. And if smart contract doesn't know how to use the NFT, you can lose your token because it's sent it to the address and the smart contract cannot do anything about this um, token, cannot send it back or I don't know, or, or do anything. Uh, so it's super smart that you have this uh, additional check that ERC1155 interface checks whether actually uh, the receiver uh, understands how to deal with the NFTs. So this function um, should help with, with it. So I will save it. And I, I will remove the token now um, and uh, I will just deploy it um, again with, uh, with this new code. Um, so here we have the deployment. Uh, here we can copy um, the address and I will just paste it uh, here um, just to be sure that we approved again the, the, the proper address for actually dealing with my game items. Uh, and now I will try to do the staking of the token ID two. So the token ID two, uh, I will copy it and I will check the balance for me. So um, you can see that I have 100 copies of it. And now I will call um, the stake function with the amount of 20. And uh, if I call it, uh, now I should have less copies because I stake them, I send them to the contract. So if I would check the balance run right now, you can see that I no longer have this NFTs because these NFTs actually right now belong to the NFT taker smart contract. And if I would copy the address here, um, you can see um, that if we pass the address of, of the smart contract, the smart contract owns right now in our name 20, um, 20 uh, copies of this smart contract. So sweet, we have working uh, stake functionality. However, right now we deployed the smart contract that only uh, allows us to stake, but we are not able to get back any tokens. So um, I think it's good moment to um, actually fix that. So uh, I will prepare for you the function called unstake. Uh, and this function uh, would basically um, do uh, the safe transfer back from our smart contract 
to the caller uh, and then of course we want to take the proper token id and the pro proper amount which is stored in this uh, in this particular mapping so we know the caller owns the certain stake the certain token so smart contract is keeping track in the, in internal memory of the smart contract who staked what and now you see that this becomes complex because um, depending on your staking rewards the logic can be way more difficult um, however i will keep the thing simple and you can see that we are just taking the token id the amount and i can withdraw the certain tokens of course you can extend the logic and allow people to stake many tokens and change the amount withdraw certain amount of the tokens you can um, just prepare it yourself um, however I, I will prepare just on stake option and then i will increase the staking time so the staking time would be uh, how long uh, in 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 um, in the seconds um, the certain NFT was staked? So um, we can just keep track of it and then maybe um, uh, calculate some rewards based on that. So you can see that I'm just incrementing the staking time, and it's the block timestamp min minus stakes uh, message dot sender timestamp. So the timestamp of which we actually stake the NFT, and then we are increasing the staking time. And at the end, once we unstake some NFT, uh, I'm just um, deleting uh, the entry um, from 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 this mapping. So for the next stake, we again can trick keep track of the timestamp of the token ID and amount. Of course, there is a limitation right now that only uh, the address can stake one token ID uh, at the time. Uh, so probably you would have to add some additional checks to the stake. So if somebody stake the NFT and then stakes again, that it's not uh, becoming uh, you know lost uh, because this would basically override the previous stake. So you can see that the code is not perfect, but again, it's just to give you idea how you can stake stuff so we have this unstake function so i will um, just uh, save it uh, and right now let's uh, deploy the contract again and let's try to see how the logic works so um, i will keep the game items uh, contract i will remove the nft staker because we will just deploy the new version of the code so we have the stake unstake uh, on erc 1155 received uh, and it should work so uh, let's deploy the contract uh, let's copy it and let's approve the smart contract again because uh, obviously whenever we have the new address we have to do it again and now um, i will just check the balance of some other contract so uh, of other token so i will do the balance um, maybe of the id3 um, so uh, i still own 100 copies and then uh, i will try to send um, the 20 uh, amount to um, to the uh, to our staking um, functionality so uh, we can just write here um, stake uh, and we can provide here a token id 3 and uh, 25 amount um, and now you can see that we stake 25 um, copies so if i would call the balance again we have the 75 of the original creator and the other 25 is right now owned by our staking um, contract so let's see uh, so the parent uh, nft of course this points to our uh, smart contract that we deployed previously uh, but now i will check um, the stakes so basically uh, this this owner um, so so the, the caller has the address and i can pass the address to the stakes and i i can uh, receive the information about the stake so actually i staked um, token id3 with the amount of 25 on the given timestamp and if i I would check the staking time for this guy uh, is zero because right now we are not keeping track of the staking time uh, we are just updating the staking time whenever somebody takes the nft back um, so so then we can add some function that calculates some rewards send some erc20 using almost the same technique as a safe transfer on the nft um, so right now i will try to unstake um the the token so um i will just um call it uh, of course um I, I will try to call it uh, as the owner uh, of, of of this uh, of this stake so if i do uh, unstake uh, then you, we can check uh, the stakes again 
and the stakes are zero, but the staking time is 84. So it took about 84 seconds for us um, to, to stake um, the, the NFT. Uh, and of course, uh, we can add some logic that uh, we can unstake and maybe calculate how long somebody staked and don't let somebody to unstake uh, if the 30 days are not passed. So you can use your imagination and add some additional constraints to it, but you know how to put something to the smart contract and how to take it back. And now, of course, I will uh, check again the balance. So we are sure uh, that actually the caller still owns 100 copies of the NFT. So um, that's basically it. Um, you can find the code um, about the smart contract down below. Um, so uh, you know um, exactly how this works. Of course, uh, if we would change the address, and if we would change address to, to this one, uh, then uh, the unstaking uh, and some other functionalities will not work because we keep this information in the struct. So thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, uh, feel free to post them down below. Uh, and I would like to invite you to my free Discord channel to which you also can find link um, in the description down below. So thank you for your attention and see you on this channel.